uh, I think we should start immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. So today is quite warm here. Really? <laughs> Com <Okay. laughs> yes, com comparing to minus 20. <laughs> Uh, somebody just sent me a message, a video. I don't know whether it's true or not. Kazakhstan, I believe, is minus 51. 51. Oh, okay, could be. Yeah, there is a continental climate. So, uh, yeah, frosty uh, winters mm -hmm. without snow, sometimes without snow. Yeah. I thought uh, uh, Moscow and Siberia and northern regions of Soviet Russia, etc., would be the coldest. Um, <laughs> we um, have influence of Gulf Stream. Uh, okay, so. okay. So that keeps yeah. the waters and the air warm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kazakhstan, I think it's also probably landlocked. So I think it does not have the benefit of uh, uh, the yeah. ocean waters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you have to send me your PPT also immediately after you finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, okay. If that is so, then I have time by uh, perhaps tomorrow morning, and if I'm lucky, maybe by tonight. Okay. Uh, I'll put up the report. Mm -hmm. So I did my last slide just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not so organized. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> no problem. If you wanted any help, you could have just have. Uh, uh, just have asked. I don't know. You just have asked me. No problem. Next, probably you can do that next time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Where is Doctor Dubey? I think is not there. Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably gone to physically call the vice chancellor, perhaps. I don't know. He left mm -hmm. us for a moment. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think we have good time. Uh, we have got another three minutes to do so. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Rajawat, good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mati. How and are you? You can good see Dr. Elena is here. Yes. Good afternoon, Dr. Elena. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Rajawat. Dr. Elena, you set very, very impressive background. Really? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's very nice. I feel myself not so experienced as my profile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope you'll have lots of pictures of Moscow today. Lots of? Pictures, images, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You asked me, so I put Yes, some yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Uh, you can see me in my sweater, uh, uh -huh. compared to uh, Moscow, which is probably minus 15, I'm at a very comfortable, apparently, a plus 15, but it's very, very chilly out here. Mm -hmm. uh, inside the house, the temperature is about 5 degrees less than normal. Oh. So I suspect it's about uh, 10 degrees here in a matter of uh, the way you feel. Ah, okay. But we have central heating. I can wear T-shirts right now. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, you're in, inside the uh, office or home? What no, no, I'm working from home because I have a small daughter and there is an order for women who have children to work from home. Okay, that's a good thing for you on your side. That's good. That's good. I spoke to Willie. He said uh, nobody's expected to go to anybody else's house. Mm. Uh, all the hotels and everything else is closed. Mm -hmm. And he says only the supermarkets are open, only to buy and sell stuff. That's it. Mm. I don't know what public transport, but everything virtually shut down, I believe, probably in the rest of Europe as well. Uh, we have now uh, just uh, a lot of people working and public uh, transport also functions. And uh, we don't have problems with this. So shops are open and... You can go if you want to, for your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have it out as open as well. We have public transport that is uh, uh, moving about. We don't have much people on the public transport. We have suburban trains also running at... 
I think probably half the number of trains as usual, mm-hmm. but they are not very full. Mm. The streets are reasonably empty. Mm-hmm. The public places that should have been uh, jam-packed with people, they are not there. They are more or less empty. Mm. Uh, so it's uh, it's as if everybody is on a holiday and uh, the movement is very slow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I think Dr. Dubey is back. Sorry, sir. Uh, my laptop was hanged. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was speaking to you and probably you didn't hear me. Uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. What about uh, Vizi Saab? Is he ready? Uh, sir, he is joining within five minutes. He is busy in a meeting. Okay, okay. We were chatting about uh, the temperature in Moscow. The last time I spoke with Elena, it was minus 20. So, <laughs> but she was feeling very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm at plus 15 here and I'm shivering because within, it's, uh, within the house, it's 10 degrees. It feels like 10 or maybe less because there's no sunshine out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you need some heating in your house. Uh, Yes, but because we have uh, very extreme weathers, in summer Mm -hmm. we touch uh, 45, 46 uh, for about a week. So Mm -hmm. we don't really think in terms of uh, having a a, a heating system and a cooling system at the same time. Mm -hmm. Our uh, rooms are not that uh, airtight in the sense that um, you have uh, spaces between the door and the floor of the mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. Uh, under such conditions, we can't have a, a, a heating system or a, or a chilling system. Mm-hmm. I don't think Indian homes are built for the heating systems ever. Um, we, how shall I say, experience the chill or the temperature, or the hot temperature as it is. We take it as it is because it's not as much as perhaps uh, hot climates uh, like those on the uh, equator or, or cold ones like yours, <laughs> Germany and the uh, UK, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, um, I mean, your temperatures probably are like this for the last three months, is it? November, December, January? Mm, do you mean uh, the lowest temperature? Cold temperature, yes. Yes, uh, but it depends on uh, the winter. For instance, last year we had quite European winter without snow and uh, the temperature was something like uh, minus one plus uh, five. Well, that must be It's not typical. Huh? It's nothing for you. Uh, and uh, we, were, we didn't have fun, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like those kind of winters. <laughs> I understand when there is... Uh... Uh, ice in the lake, uh, you people go swimming or something like of the kind. That's what I heard. Yes, there are some fans of these kind of sports. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm not swimming in winter. <laughs> okay. No. I prefer some kind of mountain skiing or skating, something okay. like that. Okay. Oh, so she goes here. Hello, Elena. Hello, Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Tashika. Welcome. And you have a nice uh, picture behind you. Ah, uh, this is a Polish wall. Okay. Polish. Hmm. I recognize it because uh, last year I took a calendar from uh, Warsaw. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. With those, with those, yeah. Yeah, this pattern. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think I must have one of those too, because behind me, there's a very colorless background. <laughs> and I'm feeling very guilty with Elena on one side and Toshiko on the other side, having very colorful backgrounds. <laughs> we can send some pictures for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. That'll be great. <laughs> so what's happening, Toshiko? What's happening? How's your uh, classes, your weather over there? Uh, it's just starting to rain after one month, almost one month dry. Okay, that means Winter. temperature will be back to two to three degrees, something like that, uh, perhaps tolerable. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is around probably four to five degrees. 
Otherwise, has it been snowing? Yeah, we are expecting snow tonight. Okay. This is unusual. Okay. And uh, Elena, I must tell you, Toshiko is a future speaker at these webinars. Yeah, I know because I made newsletter, so <laughs> I have all the information <laughs> for this moment. <laughs> and she is getting ready. I'm waiting for her to give me something to go forward <laughs> on. Sometime in the future. Sorry. <laughs> very soon, very soon. <laughs> Dubey ji? Yes sir, yes sir. Oh, free hai ki dekh lena? Main call abhi kiya tha sir ka to. They were message ki joining in within five minutes. Abhi kiya tha? Ah. पैनलिस कम है गुड वी हैव निकलस और देर एंड क्लॉडिया इज ऑल्सो देर इज लिस्निंग आई होप एंड आई होप अदर्स विल ऑल्सो ज्वाइन इन एलेना एट दिस टाइम वी हैव हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी वन पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिस इज जस्ट Zoom, we don't know how many on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether YouTube is an unlimited capacity, but I think uh, uh, post the um, session, uh, I think that's a license for two hundred listeners or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. really understand how it works. Mm-hmm. So we have quite a good uh, number of participants. You are going to have some exercises. I thought I saw on the uh, your listing list. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be, yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be good. I hope you will enjoy them. <laughs> yes, yes. Anything in exercises? Yes, exercises keep you fit. <laughs> okay. In the last ten minutes, our numbers have jumped to one hundred and fifty-two. Wow. Ten more. Wow. This rate will be. Oh, Overloaded. In our first uh, webinar, uh, that was Sebastian. We had something like four hundred and eighty something listeners. Four hundred. That's three times the number that I have today. I don't know. Hi, Nicholas. We have a message. Uh, if you want to say something, we would like to see you and hear you as well. We have a couple of minutes, I think. Nicholas sent a message on the chat. Mm-hmm. Hello. 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 Nice to be here with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I heard it was uh, quite cold in uh, in uh, in Russia at that at that moment. Uh, not today, but a week ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have rain here by the by the platform. <laughs> oh, you have a nice. I see a nice view from from your smartphone. Or yeah. yeah, perhaps you see the tree moving as well. There is a there is a, 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 a little storm coming perhaps for oh. this afternoon. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yes, and Nicholas is on. I think the, the coast. So it should be. Yeah. Uh, is that the Mediterranean coast or is it the Atlantic? Uh, no, it's a uh, uh, actually it's Atlantic coast. But we are cheating a bit because uh, we have planted a, a palm tree, which is not supposed to be there because it's not the right climax. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so um, no, we are not on the Mediterranean coast. Uh, I'm on the on the Atlantic coast, mm-hmm. but uh, yet uh, the weather is quite is, is nice, windy and storms, perfect for doing research on the. Coastline uh, risks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll cut my video. Thank you, uh, and I, I'm I'm really uh, 
eager to to listen to you. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Hope you will enjoy. For sure. Uh, Dr. Dubey. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a message from Vice Chancellor. Uh, he joined in few minutes. Okay. I so hope we can good. extend this also by the same amount of time that we uh, delayed. Yeah. I hope you have time. I hope we can conclude at say four fifteen or so. Okay. Yes. Okay. We'll do that. Nice. Where is Claudia? Claudia is hiding. Claudia, are you there? Hi. Ah, there she is. We can hear her, but we can't see her. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yes, yeah, there she is. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. Good afternoon. Sorry, this is three eleven here. Yeah, I know it's a little bit later than here. <laughs> Uh, just had breakfast. At, okay, at Toshiko's place it must be five uh, five thirty five forty. No, 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 six six forty five. Six forty five. Oh God. Okay, okay. okay. In the evening. Okay. Huh. Yes. In the house. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. We also have Dr. Mandel with us. Uh, to everybody here, Dr. Mandel is Hello, in charge everybody. of happiness research and happiness. Oh, very nice. Dr. Mandal, probably you could tell us what uh, you're doing yes, so that we, we get to we, know more yeah, of us. I think, uh, yeah, that's a, I just uh, you know, less than a minute to say that, you know, we, ever since we started a center of excellence in happiness studies in uh, 2018, we have been encouraging research in the area of happiness. Uh, so uh, to that effect, uh, apart from others, we have been organizing conferences Right since 2018, so 2018, um, uh, sorry, 2019. So 2019 was the first conference. 2020 conference had to be postponed, and 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 um, uh, you know we do it on the day of International Happiness. So International Day of Happiness that falls on 20th March. So 2020 conference had to be shifted due to COVID to to, to August, and we are now going to have the third edition of the Happiness Conference. And that's coming up on 20th August again this year. So I'll uh, hope to see some of you, if not all, in the conference, um, either as a panelist or a speaker or a paper uh, uh, contributor, or just as a delegate and ad advisor. Thank you so much. We have Irina with us uh, from, uh, uh, is that Latvia? I don't know. I'm not very sure. Lithuania. Lithuania. Sorry. Thank you, Roman. Thank you much. Lithuania. Dr. Irena, good afternoon. It must be around noon over there. My best guess. Three and a half hours. Three and a half yeah. hours. Okay. So that's just before noon. Maybe perhaps 11.30, 11.40 nowadays. Now. It's 12 o'clock. Okay. She's not, uh, she's not there yet. Hello, everybody. Ah, uh, hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi, Arna. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you were there in the last, I think, perhaps last week or before that also, perhaps the last two weeks. Good to see you here again. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity so that we can talk uh, about uh, uh, things dear to our heart, that is simulations, gaming, learning. Um, it's a small place here where we can see each other as well. I think when we started this exercise, we were not very sure 
uh, where are we going with this? It's the first time it's happening. Technology, lockdowns, COVID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think it's picked up pace, and uh, we've been able to uh, talk on such a diverse uh, set of uh, issues, from what was called medical system, starting with uh, uh, Sebas in his first uh, session, probably on 6th of October, I think. Then followed uh, Ivo with his uh, session on serious gaming. And then we've had so many. Uh, Claudia will be with us very soon, uh, as also uh, Toshiko and Irana also. I'm waiting for the confirmations. We had an excellent session with uh, Nico uh, two weeks back on participatory modeling. That was good. And uh, last week we had uh, uh, Peter, Peter van der Hagen. And uh, um, I think we we're probably just uh, on the surface now, we have got lots of topics to cover. And I'm glad we have time. That is, uh, we're probably doing about two, three uh, sessions per week. Um, so, I'm hoping that we do about another 25 by the time we end August. The plan is to collect uh, uh, the abstracts of your sessions, uh, your profiles, your photo, your PowerPoint slides, put them all together in a booklet uh, for the delegates uh, at ISAGA 2021 in Indore. We hope it is going to be a physical session so that we can physically give you something that is tangible rather than some JPG file or a PDF file of all these things put together. Uh, this will be a quite a memento uh, of uh, ideas, the practices, and what you discovered, and so on, in a wide variety of uh, gaming simulation practices. Um, I hope some of you can come back again and tell us something more about some other angle of uh, gaming, gaming simulation, which we could not do the first time. Uh, that means I'm keen to extend all this further as well. We've had an excellent team from the organizer side. Um, Dr. Dubey, whom you see on the panelist here, uh, is the person leading that effort of putting in uh, together all the uh, text of the Zoom stuff, uh, ensuring that uh, these things happen without a hiccup. So far, we have not had a hiccup. And that uh, we are able to pull together all the resources available so that the presentation happens. Uh, he's got other members of the team. Uh, uh, one or two familiar members are not here yet. Probably they'll come later. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, by this time next year, uh, whosoever is taking the carrying the flag for 2022, I think uh, we should be able to pass the baton on to them with a rich collection of uh, uh, these exhibits in the form of uh, webinars. I mean, nothing like this has happened before, partly because of technology, partly because we didn't have the trigger in the form of uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, well, we are angry with COVID-19, but it has made these things happen. And I'm thankful, we're all thankful that all of you could come together and tell us about what you do. And I hope we have more speakers, more speakers are lined up. We have probably about 10 or 12 of them ready. A couple of offers are yet to be sent. And I think we should be very happy with what they're going to present on. Uh, you can see at least uh, one potential speaker that is Claudia who's, get, who's ready. And other potent speakers like Toshiko and Irena, whose uh, <laughs> uh, confirmations are yet to come. Elena will probably do the first of the exercises ever. We have not had the exercises so far on this webinar. Probably Elena will break a fresh ground in that area today. Uh, which means I hope you will. We are going yeah. to learn something new as well. Please go on, please. I hope you will enjoy them because uh, it, it is also a kind of challenge for me to make exercises through uh, uh, PCs, laptops or whatever. <laughs> I think that is true because 
everybody is doing this for the first time all of us are uh, face to face trainers and uh, speakers and uh, so on okay the vice chancellor sir is joined uh, dr dar has joined the vice chancellor and the uh, conference uh, chairperson dr dar welcome good afternoon in that time i am sorry i kept you waking making i was in some other uh, uh, webinars so i think um, i welcome i am very happy to welcome elena to this forum uh, in fact she has been attending previous uh, she has attended previous webinars two three webinars she attended so welcome uh, to to her own webinar today and i uh, also i'm happy to welcome other uh, participants claudia is there and uh, i'm sure that this webinar is going to be a very very meaningful uh, exercise for all of us so without uh, taking much time uh, i think we can start the webinar uh, dr dar we have uh, nicholas beku who was a speaker about two weeks back and we have two potential speakers that is toshiko from uh, uh, tokyo and irena from uh, lithuania uh, they will be speaking sometime in the future and okay sure I sure to also join us welcome welcome to all thank you sir i think we should start now dr dubey yes sir uh, i invite dr elena uh, to take the and please start the webinar without okay. any delay so we are okay. already running out of time okay so uh good afternoon good evening um everyone i will share my screen so do you see the screen yes please okay so um today's topic uh, is why do we need simulation in gaming and uh, i will shortly um make my introduction uh, so today's agenda will be uh, first of all an opening uh, then i will talk about our educational activities in moscow where i work uh, then uh, i will talk about some highlights from history of simulation gaming uh, i will give a scheme shim of mastering of simulation games that we use in our activities then we will move to exercises so i ask you to join them i hope they, that you will enjoy them as well and uh, then then we will try to make some conclusions out of uh, this webinar so uh, i work i live in moscow russian federation and work in moscow state university i am a psychologist by background uh, made the phd on simulation in gaming on how people overcome situations of uncertainty in uh, different kinds of simulation games mostly we use simulation game on sustainable development and uh, some environmental and ecological issues so my phd was uh, dedicated to those kinds of uh, uh, games and uh, before um, telling you some uh, words about our educational activities i want to advertise you because my secret agent just asked me to do this so this is a picture from uh, um, the center of our city this is red square so i welcome you to come to our country to visit it there are a lot of uh, tourists you can see them and also citizens walking you see the part of our kremlin wall and uh, st basil's cathedral so uh, when the borders will be open please uh, come and enjoy our city these are also pictures from the center of moscow this is uh, winter this year so um, photos are from uh, december and january you see that a lot of people enjoy skating ice hockey so you can join some workshops on ice hockey and uh, skating uh as well as you can um, the moscow is quite huge city so you can walk uh, to some ferries and buy items there and even you can have excursion on the river on boat uh, with uh, moscow river and there are also some hills for mountain ski so if you are a fan of those kind of sports please come and enjoy yourself 
And we are talking, I'm, I'm, I, will, I will talk about games and the theme, the main theme of these webinars are games. And we also have games during winter. So last week, uh, the, it was about 20 degrees below zero. Maybe uh, it sounds awfully for you, but we really enjoy this uh, season because there are a lot of opportunities to have winter games, of, not only for kids, but for adults, adults as well. So there are a lot of uh, snowball fighting, uh, riding the hills on sleds, and even just uh, laying in the snow is also having fun for uh, even for adults. And I work at Moscow State University, named after uh, Mikhail Lomonosov. It was founded in 1755, and in two days, on uh, January 25, we will celebrate its birthday. It is also official Students' Day here in Russian Federation, when uh, students celebrate the end of the exam session, and then uh, two weeks of uh, holidays begin. So this is the main building, and you can see behind me also this main building of Moscow State University. I work at biological department, um, and there is also a beautiful botanical garden near uh, our department. So you can come also in spring, autumn, or summer, and uh, you will enjoy blooming flowers like peonies, irises, roses. Uh, we even have an artificial uh, mountain lake there where professionals come and study some rare species but uh, you can come there only with official excursions. So that was a short uh, advertising, as my secret agent asked me to do. So um, uh, I will say uh, now about uh, our educational activities, because today's presentation will be devoted uh, for educational aspects of simulation and gaming. We also do some research on them and with, uh, with the help of simulation and gaming. But today's um, talk will be about educational aspects of them. So we run uh, several instruction courses uh, on environmental protection or protection of uh, nature, on urban, uh, urban ecology, and we also have joined university uh, with our Chinese colleagues. And um, we work in a small team, my scientific advisor, scientific advisor is uh, Professor Dmitry Kovtaradze, he is biologist and uh, he also educates uh, Chinese uh, st students on this topic of uh, urban ecology and then environmental protection. And we also have a course on simulation in gaming and complex systems management. So um, uh, we propose those uh, courses for future uh, managers of natural uh, resources for geographers, for biologists, biotechnologists. And uh, mm, uh, you see some kind of uh, our examples of uh, our simulation games. They are both uh, uh, card games or board games, as well as digital games and computer assisted games. So a wide variety of uh, those kind of um, games on environmental protection and other issues. And um, the important uh, aspect that I want to talk about is that um, students who attend our courses on simulation and games in complex systems management uh, and um, uh, environmental protection, they receive a home assignment for, for us. Uh, so they should uh, do this task to get their credits to pass the exam and uh, they make their own educational games at the end of our courses. So there are some examples of games of our biotechnologists. Uh, on the left side, there is a picture from the game Apoptosis of Neuron. This is a, a table or board game. There are some dice, chips, and uh, participants uh, can learn the life cycle of neuron and the very important process of apoptosis, that is the test of uh, neuron. Uh, in the middle, uh, there is game uh, stimulation of plant growth. This is matchbox game. And you see that <clears throat> there are some pictures, of, for instance, in the left, there is a glass of uh, piped water. So your task is to put those match boxes together in a chain, for instance, 
uh, on the left side, you will put uh, the product that influences your plant uh, mostly, and on the left side, that influences uh, uh, not so, um, the influence is not so high. So for instance, uh, uh, piped water, if you put it on um, uh, your plant, uh, it will uh, give it opportunity to grow up to 1.17 centimeters. And uh, on the right side of uh, the screen, you see a picture from uh, a game that, that is called uh, Diagnosis of Infectious Diseases or PCR Diagnostics. Uh, this game teaches uh, his, its participant uh, how these PCR diagnostics works. So it educates participants of the importance of these PCR diagnostics. Uh, I hope that all, unfortunately, you know what does it mean, PCR diagnostics, because uh, we're all living in a COVID times now. Um, we also have uh, interactive sessions and workshops. We organize uh, schools on uh, active learning methods and uh, I, I hope that Irena uh, rem can remember one of uh, the picture because we uh, organized summer school for Russian speaking teachers, school teachers in Lithuania during Isaga 2008. Uh, also, we give uh, our workshops during big and small uh, conferences. For instance, there was a, um, a CIS Congress of uh, teachers and we gave their workshop on sustainable development games. Also, what is important that we provide, we um, provide our participants with the certificates uh, that prove that they have mastered uh, these kind of uh, learning methods. And we also collaborate with our partners worldwide. So there are some examples. We did uh, some teleconferences with Dr. Mar Marcus Ulrich. I hope that you will, uh, maybe he will be a future um, speaker of this uh, series of webinars. He also works on sustainable development games and these issues. And we made a reading book uh, all about simulation models and games of different kinds, not only uh, about sustainable development, together with Dr. Elizabeth Lee from Australia. Uh, those, uh, book, this book uh, includes mostly works in Russian, but it, it, it all, there are some works in English as well, and it can be easily found in uh, internet by reference papers in four, so you can uh, uh, search for, for this by yourself. And um, let me ask you a question. You can ask, uh, you can answer uh, it by yourself. So uh, what is the game for you? We're talking about games, so we're talking about simulations, but uh, I didn't hear any clear explanation of what is the game is. And uh, if you will think about, uh, for instance, some kind of uh, sports game, I, uh, I, I talked about hockey or mountain skis, and you will be right. Uh, or you may think about kids game, uh, games, or you may think about uh, from the psychological uh, point of uh, of you and uh, remember some kinds of uh, games with attitudes between people and these answers are all right so there are a lot of multiple definitions of what is the game and uh, what is important and uh, i refer to this uh, every time that <laughs> For me, a simulation game and game is a symbolic reality that gives a sense of security for its participant. So um, I can make some decisions uh, or actions. And I know that uh, at the same time, I know that it is the game, but I make it within the rules of the game. So I'm not responsible. Uh, I can make mistakes. And at the same time, I am responsible uh, within those rules of games. So the game gives a sense of security of, of, for, for its participant. And also uh, there is a big uh, question of uh, how can we describe what simulation game is to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the person who didn't participate in any kind of uh, simulation game. That is a big problem for us. 
So uh, we can't give a non-user a good definition on what a simulation game is until he or she will participate in it. That's why I thought about some kind of exercises. Uh, they are not real simulation games, but uh, I hope that you will grasp, grasp some sense of what the game is. And uh, we are moving to the uh, history of uh, simulation and gaming. A uh, very huge influence uh, simulation game. Um, gaming has from military games or war games. Uh, I'm from Russia, so I will uh, show you a picture uh, from our history. Uh, this uh, uh, is Peter the Great and his father, just uh, for, for his fun, uh, wanted to uh, make a kind of uh, uh, real uh, game in re reality, I would say. So that was a collection of young Peter's playmates or noblemen's sons and attendants of his of Alexei's court. That was his father. So that was the first, I think, example in Russia when uh, war games were officially established. And uh, this was the beginning of uh, 18th century. And this picture, maybe some of you are familiar with this picture, uh, maybe not, uh, but uh, I hope that some of you can recognize men that, that are sitting here. Uh, I will give an answer immediately. Uh, these are Gerbert Wells playing with toy soldiers on the floor and the man waiting for his uh, decision is Jerome Klepka Jerome. So they are playing tall soldiers that were also some kind of uh, uh, war games. Uh, and Gerbert Wells, I think that he was the first person who collected all the rules that existed before him and uh, also from a German culture, German tradition, uh, Kriegspiele, you know about that, I, I hope. And uh, he also wrote a book uh, with title Little Wars. I have the whole title, it's, it is quite long. long. Uh, Little Wars, a game for boys from 12 years of age to 150. And for that more intelligent sort of girls who likes boys games and books. So I think that uh, this was a first uh, uh, manual, one, uh, uh, some kind of a first manual for uh, those who like those kind of games. And uh, this is an anecdotal example from our culture, uh, the scene from very popular Chipayev movie. You see uh, Commander Chupayev who explain, uh, explains uh, when does the where does the commander or a good commander should be while attacking or battling with uh, opponents. And he uses uh, potatoes and apples to demonstrate tactics and uh, st strategy. So uh, we also have this uh, huge influence from uh, war games in our culture. And uh, the last example from this uh, um, kind of games, it, this is the real map from training, military training, just in the beginning of 1941, before the uh, uh, beginning of uh, the Second Patriotic War in our country. Uh, one of the participants was uh, Commander Georgi Zhukov, and uh, he used this gaming experience in real life later in real uh, war and he was successful in using this uh, experience and uh, next uh, i will talk about uh, some sorry uh, uh, about uh, uh, other aspects of uh, simulation in gaming in history and i ask you to answer the question, what do you think? When did uh, the first simulation game was facilitated? I will wait for your answer for five seconds, I think. Okay. So that is the answer. Ah, okay, Vinet, you, 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 you wanted to answer, no? 
<laughs> okay, that is the answer. So the first simulation game was designed in early 30s of last century. So the first simulation game was facilitated in June 1932. Uh, by Maria Mirandovna Birstein in Leningrad or St. Petersburg. And uh, it was designed for industrial purposes because our country was young enough, uh, USSR, young USSR. And there were a lot of tasks uh, to uh, reconstruct some uh, industries. And the first simulation game uh, was uh, facilitated at assembly shop at the Ligova typewriter factory. Uh, we call Maria Mironovna Birstein mother of simulation and gaming and uh, together with her husband Timofey Timofeyevsky, uh, we call them uh, as a mini scientific research institute because they have elaborated, have designed, facilitated enormous amount of uh, different simulations and games. And also, if you are interested, you can find several articles about Birstein in uh, Simulation and Gaming Journal in English, they are available. So, um, uh, also in our work, uh, we often refer to this uh, uh, Richard Duke's book, Gaming the Future's Language. Uh, it's very important for all uh, members of uh, ISAGA community who uh, love simulation and gaming. Uh, here you can see the conceptual map of uh, the pro yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, uh, of, uh, yeah, I have with me it. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> um, you can see the conceptual map of the process of uh, design of simulation game uh, and you can see that the process is very complicated. It takes minimum 10 times to test your prototype just before uh, you can go to the next step uh, of using of production or whatever. Uh, and he, I mean Dick Duke, defines gaming simulation as a gestalt communication mode. And uh, this uh, Gestalt communication mode contains game specific language, appropriate communication technologies, and the multi lock interaction pattern, uh, which is highly important for us because participant, participants of simulation games uh, communicate within those rules of games with each other, with themselves, with the facilitator, or even with the system of uh, the game itself. And uh, there are some examples of uh, educational simulation games that we use in our everyday practice. Uh, some of them were designed at a uh, biological department, for instance, uh, um, Compass, uh, uh, Econet ABC and Island. And from the uh, educational point of view, uh, simulation games are a approximate basis for professional activity of their participants who must uh, model of their possible future. So the participants of uh, those educational games can grasp uh, uh, a sense of being a professional with, with uh, an opportunity, with possibility uh, to make mistakes and to see the consequences of their actions. Uh, this uh, an example of uh, our Compass digital game for one user. Uh, cost, uh, Compass, uh, this is a game about coastal management uh, of, to achieve sustainability. And uh, this is more complicated game, Econet ABC. Uh, this is a role playing game assisted by a uh, computer. And uh, you can see that one of the participants describes uh, the strategy. He was the governor of a big region. It can be compared, uh, for instance, with a European country. And uh, he describes the strategy of managing this region for future uh, for the future, yeah. So this is an, uh, this was an example, and um, in our uh, activity, in our educational uh, activity, we use this uh, theme, uh, kind of a ladder, steps in mastering of 
active learning methods. It was elaborated by Dmitry Kovtaradze. So we try to begin every session, uh, every course uh, workshop with uh, small games on perception. Uh, so how do I perceive the uh, uh, world surrounding me? How do I perceive myself and others? Then we move to games on communication. Uh, so participants uh, can make them in uh, pairs or triads and even in the, in the group. Then we propose them to, to improve their uh, dialogue skills uh, and discussion skills uh, we also use some kind of role playing uh, these are not live action role play maybe some of you know these kind of games but we use role playing in simulations and then uh, we move to big complicated simulation games like Econet ABC or fish banks uh, I hope that most of you know already know this game by Dennis Meadows and we hope that uh, our students, our participants, then uh, can use uh, their knowledge, their understanding in everyday practice, which will, uh, who, which, which will be the examiner for their knowing, for their understanding. Um, so, uh, next, we move to exercises. And I talked about uh, perception exercises. So our participants come to us with their own preconceived notions, with their own feelings, with their own knowledge. And uh, we ask them this question, uh, what do I know about myself or what do they know about themselves? So please think about this. What do you know about yourself? And to answer this question, we propose them some exercises. These would be uh, some examples. So look at this picture. What do you see here? So this is the famous illusion. This is an illusion. It is called my wife and my mother-in-law. It was originally uh, printed on German postcards, but uh, I hope that you know this version of this illusion. And this is a, a figure shifter or ambiguous image, dual or ambiguous image. At the same time, you see only uh, either only a, an old woman or a young lady. So uh, if you see a young lady, her nose, her ear, her necklace, then a uh, young lady becomes a figure for you and other, uh, the uh, old lady becomes a background. So our perception could be biased by some uh, uh, obje object, uh, ob objectivity. So you can't see both of them at the same time. That is uh, the main conclusion from this exercise. And next, um, we will make ex a true exercise. I will need your middle and index fingers. Put your index and middle fingers together. If you can see me like this. Okay. Close your eyes, touch the tip of your nose or glide finger over it like I do. So what do you feel? Remember this feeling. Okay. Okay. So please look at the screen. Oh, <laughs> you are deep <laughs> in your feeling. Okay. So look at the screen, please. Um, and now I will need your crossed fingers, your crossed middle and index fingers, like uh, in, on this picture. And do the same, please do the same. Cross your index and middle fingers, close your eyes and touch the tip of your nose or glide over it like I do.
So what do you feel now? Okay, let's move, let's move further on. Um, if your answer will be, uh, uh, I have to know this, I feel to know this, that is okay. Because our brain is confused by this situation. We don't uh, take objects by our crossed fingers like I, I, I don't know whether you see it or not, like this, or we don't, don't touch objects with our crossed fingers. So our brain is confused and it gives us an answer that you, uh, I have to know this. But uh, this is a nonsense for us because we are all educated. We have our own experience and uh, this experience influences us. So normal participants and most of our participants answer that I feel nose or I feel something and rare examples or rare answers are that uh, I feel two noses. This is a face Aristotle's illusion and it tells us that our perception of whatever it could be uh, uh, our perception depends on the past experience and uh, we uh, should take this into account while making something or doing something. And uh, let's move further. Oh, by the way, if you have some comments or questions, uh, please ask them. I will try to answer. Okay. And uh, let's move further. So look at the picture and please uh, answer, count all triangles and answer to the question. How many triangles are formed when nine small triangles are connected? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the answer. Uh, you see how you can count this um, by yourself. Uh, there are 13 triangles, nine small, one big one, one big black triangle and three middle triangles red orange and blue and we will move to more important question so i will need more your mathematical skills uh, <laughs> if you remove one of the smallest triangles then how many of the 13 triangles will be left mm -hmm. One smallest, one of the smallest, I mean one of nine. One of the smallest. But in, when answer is there in QA, Dr. Akhileta, 11. <laughs> okay, 11. Okay. Any other version? So let's move to the answer because a time we have time, uh, we don't have enough time to sit here. Oh, oh. yeah, oh, no, where is it? Okay, well, this is the answer to this question. So uh, there will be only seven or nine triangle, triangles remain, remaining depending on which you remove. So this is the answer to this question. You can try it by yourself uh, self later on at home or with your friends. And what does this exercise can uh, say to us? 
what is the meaning of exercise or could be the meaning of this exercise? Mm -hmm. So we uh, have uh, uh, experienced that triangles are connected to each other. So you can't reduce the number of triangles by only one. And uh, taking away one also eliminates three or five others. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we're talking about systems or uh, particular ecosystems, species in ecosystems are more connected to each other than the triangles are. And uh, a big mistake is to think that only a single species may be endangered. Whenever we lose one species, we inevitably lose many. So you, you may recall um, fire, wildfires last year in Australia when a, a lot of a lot of koalas or kangaroos have gone uh, or flooding or droughts uh, or uh, the activity of mankind. So we influence not only one species. So uh, let's, if, uh, it doesn't work. Oh, okay, so let's move to uh, next uh, exercise. Sorry. Um, this, <laughs> my daughter also particip participating, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, let's move to the next exercise. Uh, you see nine dots on the screen and I also require your uh, mathematical experience, mathematical skills. So you, this, the task for you now is to connect all nine dots with four straight lines you can use paper sheet and the pencil if you have them, but you can also use your finger on the screen. It's okay. And the important rule, you uh, should connect all the dots without lifting your pencil of the paper. So four straight lines without lifting your pencil of the paper. So this is the answer. Let's do it again. This is the answer to this task. This is the solution. And um, what does it say to us? Uh, what is the conclusion from this uh, um, exercise. Uh, we uh, can't solve this task without uh, getting outside uh, the space, outside these problems. So to solve the task, you should look at the system or, or at this problem from outside. You should change your position. And uh, the solution lies beyond the lit literal meaning of this situation. Um, Sometimes you should go out of these uh, borders and look at the problem from the third dimension, for instance. Um, so the next, the next and last exercise for today, uh, this will be uh, the arrangement of chess pieces, uh, famous Indian uh, uh, game. And your task is to uh, Remember all the chess pieces that I showed you. I will show it once again for three seconds. So remember all the chess pieces on the board. Okay. Who can answer uh, how did those pieces stand on the board? Can you remember them? That is a quite complicated task. Yeah, I know because I can't answer either. Uh, this is the answer. And uh, what does it mean for us? What does this exercise mean for us? 
if you will ask uh, how did those chess pieces stand on the board, for instance, uh, Grandmaster in chess, he will answer, I don't remember, but white mates in two moves. So he has a big experience in playing chess and he combines all these chess pieces into, let's say, uh, psychological or meaningful units. And uh, they uh, identify, identificate, identify uh, those combinations in their mind. And a normal person, a normal participant, uh, um, I think that will never uh, give the correct answer only or if he will uh, remember like uh, the uh, white keen uh, standard on uh, uh, F8 or uh, black king standard on the H8. And this doesn't make sense for you. So uh, we digest information uh, by giving it some sense or meaning and uh, senseless information will uh, be removed from our brain, from our mind, if we don't give the meaning for this information, if it is meaningless for us. So uh, let's slightly move to some conclusions. Uh, those uh, exercises uh, that are devoted to the perception, to the understanding of yourself, to understanding of the world around you were collected and we published it uh, in Russian. There are 56 cards uh, containing uh, these exercises and a manual to you how to use them. So we made this for teachers, for school teachers, for uh, educators at the universities, and these can work as a cheat sheet for them during their sessions. So these are some examples uh, how cards uh, look like. Uh, you see the illusion, my wife and my mother-in-law, or famous thumb wrestling uh, exercise by uh, Dennis Meadows. Mm, and uh, uh, we will move to the conclusion of today's session. I don't know whether I, I have, uh, do I have uh, some time? Vina, do I have? Uh... Sure, you have about three, four minutes. Okay, so um, I will make some conclusion. First of all, I hope that learning through games is uh, having fun for all participants. Uh, even through, uh, even if you facilitate these uh, very simple, uh, sometimes uh, silly exercises, uh, you have fun, but at the same time you learn. And uh, I believe that these kind of exercises expand your mind, uh, and uh, uh, people may know something, uh, may know some information, but this knowing, this knowledge does not equal. Uh, the understanding of uh, himself, herself, or the world. And uh, we learn by doing in all kinds of simulation in gaming. Uh, as I said, uh, a non-user can't grasp the understanding of simulation in gaming without participating in it. So we learn by joint actions, by, uh, by communicating with each other. Uh, also, the very important um, uh, result is that participants make their decisions with regard to, to the uh, long consequences and consequences. Uh, they can make mistakes and then they can analyze those mistakes and take them into account uh, in their future life. And uh, also knowing and understanding not only, the con uh, not, not only the content of the game, but themselves and the world around them is crucial for, uh, for, for the participants. We can run a game uh, about sustainable development, but uh, making decisions, making mistakes, they also uh, be begin to understand themselves and the world around them. So thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoy this uh, session and uh, I am open for your questions and comments. It was indeed a great session. I am very happy because uh, we share a common background and also from basically from psychology. Oh, and, that's great. 
and the incident three i also use these exercises nine dot problems you see it is uh, one it can be connected with connected by four continuous straight lines as you have demonstrated similarly these nine dots can be connected by three continuous straight lines also which i have been doing in my programs and then the gestalt pictures that you have presented i have also been using them now i am in this profession for last 43 years i am happy that we are we are sharing a common background it was very very okay. interesting so uh, let us see uh, we can have some questions from our participants and you may well uh, answer oh, thank you mm -hmm. yeah jigasu you can read out the questions okay sir thank you uh, thank you dr elena for wonderful session now i invite our panelists to who asked some questions. Uh, Dr. Claudia, you have any question? <laughs> I have a question. I have a question, Dr. Jigyasu. Sir, please. Can I go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alina, for your presentation. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Guru Prasad from uh, Institute of Science, uh, Vaishnav Vishwavidyalaya. Uh, I'm happy to see the background of Moscow University because I was also working there for oh. some time in the bio biophysics uh, department uh, oh. with Professor Vitali. Mm. Um, uh, this, uh, uh, the model which you showed, you know, for uh, uh, environmental dependence, you know, and uh, ecological dependence of the species, uh, which you showed, you were uh, showing the triangle model that if you, if you disturb one triangle, you disturb many things. But uh, environmental uh, ecological balances are more, much more complex than this, right? Uh, do you use any more complex models for that? Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, it is not a more complex game uh, and not a complex model. We use the card game uh, island. Uh, so there are cards with uh, grass and some species. And if uh, a, a, a person influences one card, so he can remove uh, some, card, uh, some cards from the um, table. Uh, he will influence other species. I I don't so I, I don't think that it is too complicated and uh, that's uh, so uh, I would say complex model. But I spoke about uh, Econet BC. This is a big uh, simulation game for I think uh, 20 25 participants. Uh, they work in teams. They make decisions how to manage a territory, how to make ecological corridors for animals, for different species, and at the same time, how to um, develop economic system and social sphere. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So even ecological corridors you can make in that? Uh, yeah, they try to make them. I, I wouldn't say that uh, they make them, they try to make them. It's too complex. Uh, it, it can take uh, five and more hours to play this game. It's very complex, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. I invite panelist Claudia. Uh, she has some question. Yes. When, uh, when I saw your presentation, I remembered um, a game we played in Krakow, and it was a Russian biologist who created it, and it was the food chain, who eats whom, and what happens if we take away the, the yeah. above one, and how does the system get out of balance? So I think this is also a very easy game. It looked at me, for me, it looked very simple in the beginning, but the understand the system, how it has to be in balance is quite important just to understand biological systems. Do you remember the Yes, this is the island. I said about that, but uh, too, too shortly. <laughs> yeah, this is the island. Yeah. Dr. Mandel?
I was just wondering, you know, uh, stretching my imagination as to uh, she explained very nicely the application of games in, uh, in uh, like Dr. Cooper has said, you know, socio environmental and then later on psychological uh, aspects. Uh, I was just, you know, stretching my imagination as to where else, you know, these games and, and, and emulations could be used. Uh, where else? I, I, I recall that, uh, you know, the, the scope is uh, very, very huge. Uh, application of simulation is uh, beyond doubt as far as area of science and technology is concerned. This has been going on for uh, decades. And... Uh, Really great to see that you know this uh, applications are ex extended to socio environmental and uh, in some of the economic and political uh, aspects of life. So this is the question: How can we expand no, it's a those? Statement. It's a statement. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I invite Dr. Uh, Irina to ask a question. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much, Elena, for uh, very nice presentation. Okay. Eight in, in Kaunas and Lithuania. So thank you very much. It was uh, very nice to see uh, your presentation. So uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think uh, about small exercises if you would like to involve them in complicated uh, simulation in gaming, uh, what is the role of uh, small exercises in, in a big system? Uh, thank you for your question. I think that uh, they can act as warmers, as icebreakers, then as a kind of uh, having rest uh, between uh, different rounds of uh, making decisions. And if the theme is connected to the main theme of the complex game, they also can act as kind of uh, getting out uh, of the role and uh, making a conference, for instance, for the whole group. If, t if uh, all the participants work in small teams, then they um, uh, gather together and have a big conference using those techniques, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, Thank you. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, I read out one question is from Dr. Abhishek Rathore. Uh, I am having five year old son. Can you suggest which types of games are good for improving his generalization power and which types of games are good for memorization? I think that uh, there are a lot of techniques, existing techniques you can find and search them through internet. Uh, um, uh, but for your everyday practice, you can use small sheets of paper, just putting them uh, on the table or even in some places that you visit most or in the kitchen and write them there some items that you want to know. Uh, and look at them because you eat every day and you see those places every day. Mm, and uh, there is an example from uh, Russian uh, psychologist uh, uh, who put uh, those items that he wanted to remember into places where he visit mostly during his uh, travel from his home to the work and back then. So uh, you can put, uh, for instance, uh, a, a very complicated word, I don't know in English, a very complicated word to this um, station, tram station. And uh, uh, for instance, the next complicated word to his, uh, to the entrance of this, of his job. And he travels uh, every day there and, uh, so he can remember those words or items or whatever he wants or she wants. Uh, I invite Toshiko Kikawa if she has some question. Uh, I, I don't have a question. I have just a comment because I am a social psychologist. 
So the her topic is very familiar with me. And I'm proud that I can I could join her presentation today. Thank you very much, Elena. Thank you. Lena, I, I can I ask something? You know, see, uh, uh, do you find scope of uh, um, uh, simulation in gaming in uh, psychiatric you know, treatment, treating psychiatric disorders? Uh, well, I don't, uh, thank you for your question. Um, I don't think that they can cure a person. Uh, they are mostly designed for health, healthy uh, participants and maybe some simple exercises for memorization or whatever can help uh, in this work. But uh, I don't think that they can cure or work in psychiatric field. I was yeah. thinking from the point of view of, uh, let's say, meditation. Meditation is known to be a an excellent healer of uh, many uh, psychology related problems. Uh, so uh, just by an extension of the same thought, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, mm -hmm. there could be something else. Uh, I don't know, I'm a you know, novice, but uh, I was just mm -hmm. imagining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some simple exercises for uh, those people, and they are famous. Uh, most of them are famous within the psychological society. But uh, I don't think that simulation games can work in this field. Yeah. Thank you. Now, moving further, I invite Dr. Vinod Damlekarji for his concluding remark. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dubey. Uh, Elena covered a wide variety of topics uh, today. Uh, with those uh, five or six games, I think she engaged all of us. Um, I was very happy to see uh, Professor Dimitri Kavtaratse there in uh, three or four uh, photographs. Uh, I don't know whether you recognize him. He was that senior personnel there, right there. Probably in one photograph or of the last one, he was speak. He was standing on the left side. I saw him about uh, uh, when 2004, about 17, 18 years back, at Munich, and then I saw him again. I think in Don Bean. Uh, he was a fantastic uh, a designer and a facilitator of games, and of course, uh, Elena's uh, uh, guide, if I know, if I remember right. It's good to see him again. Uh, you covered a lot of topics, uh, such as uh, war games. War games reminded me of the game that I played 50 years back oh. uh, in my college. Of course, we didn't battle it out with uh, our fists, or etc. It was just a couple of... Uh, it was I played uh, what was called Battleship with my cousin, and it was fun. It kept us engaged. Probably it was uh, similar to Sudoku of uh, what we had today. Uh, the games that you have of uh, chess and connecting the dots, the wife and the mother, and of course the triangle. I think all these are uh, games that uh, build our awareness. It opens uh, what might be said to be windows in our mind. We get to see larger. Uh, that triangle game that you suggested, where you tell us that everything is connected to everything else and applying it to ecology environment. I think that's a good uh, uh, game. And uh, probably responding to a question that one of the panelists asked, I think the smaller the game, uh, probably the more powerful is the meaning. Because if you have play a very large game, uh, you have lots of meanings coming together out of that large game, but you cannot remember. You cannot remember enough so that you can go home and apply it. Therefore, small games are more powerful. Uh, I like to see those pictures about uh, uh, the red square, the Kremlin square. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, satisfying my curiosity about what your country looked like at minus 20 degrees. Um, I hear, I think all of us had fun. Uh, and you meant, did you really see Jerome K. Jerome? Uh, me? Uh, yes, when talking about H.G. Wells. 
Yes, he's uh, waiting for Gerbert Wells. Uh, Gerbert Wells is sitting and playing uh, with uh, toy mm -hmm. uh, soldiers, and he is waiting behind just for yes. his decision. Yes, you can find uh, it internet. The information is all in internet. Yeah. Belts was one of probably the earliest science fiction writers. And science fiction, is, of course, uh, I've been crazy about again for 50, 55 years. Uh, you have, uh, I think, uh, pushed everybody's curiosity here further into the domain of simulation games, which is central to our uh, being and thinking. Uh, thank you, Elena, for uh, this uh, wonderful exercise. Uh, this exercise has also been very interactive because of the panelists who ask questions. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bay and your team for making this happen. I know that uh, it appears very easy for us that everybody comes here just for one, one and a half hours and then it's all over. There's a lot of planning and effort that goes on. And I think the greatest effort is put in by uh, Dr. Dubey out there. They don't see it, but he is the one who puts all these things together and makes things happen and uh, that everything happens at time, on time. And of course, this is the entire show is led by uh, Dr. Dar, who is very busy. And despite that, he came and... Uh, was there with us for 20 minutes. I mean, it was okay. That happens to all of us. We could get delayed. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dar, for initiating the exercise and for uh, helping us uh, take us on a different path, a really different path uh, for a conference, a primer, so to speak. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. And I hope you are again uh, with us. I think uh, the next one is probably 6th of February, if I'm Next right. Time. Is yes. it uh, Jagadishwaran from Malaysia, if I'm right? I think he is going to speak. I don't know why he is missing. He should have been here. Maybe he was busy. He was there last two weeks or so. Um, and I hope to see all of you again. I'm glad to see Nicholas, uh, despite the fact he's finished his uh, speaking spell. He's with us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, all the panelists. Okay. Bye-bye. Elena, I need hope your... To see you. Hope to see you in Saga 2021 in... September oh, 2020. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All of you are invited. Thank you. Elena, your PPTs, please. Early. As quickly as possible. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah. I will send them. Thank okay. You. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you and bye-bye.